Today I'm going to start to talk about the connective tissue. As I said before, in our body we have four main basic tissues. We have the epithelium, we have the connective, we have the muscle and the nervous system. So the connective tissue is one of the four basic tissue. From the name, it's connect the different tissues together. Provide a framework support entire body by means of cartilage and bones As you know our body we have the skeletal system and this skeletal system is consist of the bones and the cartilage and These bone and cartilage support the entire body They provide the framework that enable us to move to act and Also support and protect the soft tissue also, connective tissue play a role in thermal regulation, also in defense and repair mechanism. By definition, connective tissue is consists of cell embedded in an extracellular matrix. And usually this extracellular matrix consists of fibers and also consists of amorphous ground substance. So the connective tissue have main three component cells, fiber, and ground substance. And usually the classification of the connective tissue depend in the type of the cells that exist, in the type and arrangement of the fibers, and finally in the characteristics of the ground substance. As I said, all of the connective tissue almost have the same components. They have the extracellular matrix, which is the ground substance. They have the fibers, and finally, they have the cells. So we have ground substance, we have the fibers, and finally, we have the cells. And usually, the difference between the different types of the connective tissue depend mostly and widely in the proportion and ratio of the different levels of these components the ground substance the fibers and the cells as we are going to talk about that later however all the connective tissue have similar components and share the cell types so now we are going to start to talk about about the component of the connective tissue the first one which is the extracellular matrix the other name which is a ground substance cell and fiber are embedded in ground substance this ground substance consists of glucosaminoglycan and protoglycan so it's glucose amino acid and also sugars and as same here, it's a protein and sugar, the protoglycan. So mostly we have the cells, and we have the fiber, and this fiber almost found in a ground substance, almost like a hydrated gel. So this is very important, so it can hold the connective tissue component together. So this is jello, the hydrated gel, Inside it, we have the cells and we have the fiber which embedded inside it. Usually, this ground substance has a high content of water and very important, it resilience has a resilience characteristics. The second component of the connective tissue, which is the fibers, we have three main types of fibers. The most common, which is the collagen. Then we have the reticular, and finally we have the elastic fibers. Collagen fiber, almost 25% of the total protein mass in our body is consists of collagen fiber. And specifically we have and the most common, which is type 1 collagen. And usually this consists of closely packed 75 nanometer diameter tropocollagen fibrils. So we have these fibrils closely back and their diameter around 75 nanometers. The second one we have, which is the reticular fibers, and usually this one 
type 3 collagen will be loosely packed with 75 nanometer in diameter so this one is very small compared with the collagen fiber and usually the reticular fiber we could not resolve in light microscopy we have to use special stain which is the silver impregnation to be able to detect the reticular fibers the third type we have we have the elastic fiber which consists of the elastin and fibrin microfibrils in amorphous elastin so we have collagen fiber which is the most common we have reticular fiber which is type 3 collagen and finally we have the elastic fiber the largest we have the elastic fiber then we have the collagen and finally we have the reticular fiber by me by means I mean their diameter as I said before all the connective tissue have the same component we have the matrix the ground matrix we have the fibers and finally we have the cells and as I said the proportion vary widely between different types of the connective tissue and usually the characteristics of each connective tissue depend the ratio and the amount of the different component which is the matrix the fiber and finally the cells as I said before all the connective tissue have similar component and share cell type so now I'm going to talk about the third component of the connective tissue, which is the cells. Nearly all connective tissue have common stem cell. They start as one cell, which is the mesenchymal cells, and these cells are going to proliferate and differentiate. Proliferation means increase in number. Differentiation means the cells transform to more complex structures once these cells differentiated they could not regress back so as we can see here this is the main cell which is mesenchymal cells they could differentiate into adipocyte they could be differentiated to brown adipocyte or osteoblast which is responsible for formation of the bone we have the chondroblast which is responsible for formation of the cartilage and the fibroblast which is the most important cells in the connective tissue and they could differentiate it to mast cells so they can proliferate increase in number or differentiate However, the cells, once differentiated, once differentiated to osteoblast, they could not regress back. They could not go back to be mesenchymal cells. And usually in the, during embryonic period, all of the fetal tissue is mesenchymal cells. But when we reach to the level of the adult stage, only 5% of these cells remain as mesenchymal cells, what we call stem cell. As I said, 5% of these cell mesenchymal cells will remain in the adult, and most of the stem cell research is working in these 5%. So, mesenchymal cells, they are a regular shape with multiple processes. These cells, like this one, they have several processes. They are pluripotential cells, pluri multiple potential cells they can proliferate and differentiate to any other cell types the most prominent feature their nucleus almost what we can see here their nucleus almost we could not see the cytoplasm as i said they are reserved as reservoir of cells they serve as reservoir of cells as i said five percent of these cells is found in the adult and most of these cells is used in the stem cell 
research. The first cell, I'm going to talk about the cells of the connective tissue, which is the fibroblast. This cell arises from mesenchymal cells. This cell spindle shape with processes that contact a Jason cell and fibers. So the cells like this, they are processes, and these processes in contact with other cells and also with contact with the fibers. Usually these cells, they have a very well developed rough endoplasmic reticulum, so they are responsible for protein synthesis. Also, they have well developed Golgi apparatus. As we know, these cells are responsible for production of the collagen, which is a protein, and this protein is going to be exported outside the cells. So these two structures, the rough endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus, active in making the extracellular components, the ground matrix, beside the fibers. Yeah. Smaller cells are more slender when quiescent. We have two important things we have to know. We have the fibroblast and we have the site. When the cell is active with the synthesis of protein and exporting this protein, usually the cell we call it plast active. However, when the cell is less active or quiescent, we call it as the fibrocyte. Usually the cells, when they are inactive, we can see here the nucleus is dark staining. As I said before, when the cell is inactive, the DNA will be condensed in each other, and this will give us the blue, dark blue nucleus. However, when the cell is more active with the protein synthesis, we know that we have to do gene expression and gene transcription and translation, and usually we result in that the cell, the DNA have to be extended. So this gives the nucleus the pale staining. So whenever the cell is active, it's fibroblast. Whenever it's inactive or quiescent, it's fibrocyte. The difference we look for the nucleus. If the nucleus dark, then the cell is inactive. If the nucleus pale staining, then the cells are active. As I said, these cells are cylindrical in shape and you can see the nucleus is flat and you can see outside here all what we can see here this is the collagen fiber as I said these cells they have very well developed rough endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus the second cell we have which is the lymphocyte and usually this is cell that's found in the blood and usually migrate toward the connective tissue and these cells are responsible for the immune response so these cells arise from the lymphoid stem cells that found in the bone marrow and usually we have two type of lymphocyte we have the t lymphocyte and we have the b lymphocyte t cells that differentiate in the thymus and usually they are responsible for the cell mediated immunity whereas the B cells function in the humoral immune response which is the production of the antibodies the third cell we have which is the neutrophils it, this is the first cell that appear in the inflammatory reaction whenever we have inflammation or infection the third cell the first cell that appears and reach to the area of the inflammation or infection this is their neutrophil and usually this cells very important in the phagocytic bacteria and also contain granules one of the most important feature of these neutrophils they are tri-looped the nucleus is not spherical in shape they have one loop they have the second loop and they have the third loop so that's why we call it it's a tri looped nucleus the fourth cell we have which is the eosinophils 
These cells are important for the parasite immune response. Whenever we have parasitic infection, there is increase in the number of the eosinophils. And usually these cells, the nucleus, by loop, and also contain these pink granules. And these granules are very important in immune response against the parasite. Usually contains enzymes that cleave histamine and leukotriene C to moderate the allergic reaction. As I said, these nucleus are bilobed nucleus. The fifth cells we have, which is the parasite, these cells mesenchymal like stem cell. So they can proliferate and differentiate. Usually they found around the blood capillaries. They are important in wound healing. If we, whenever we have cut in our connective tissue, these are very important because they can differentiate into fibroblast and smooth muscle. So here we can see this is the blood vessels. Inside the blood vessels here, the capillary, we can see the red blood cells. However, the cell that found outside and surround the blood capillary. These cells is called pericyte. As I said, they are mesenchymal-like stem cells. The sixth cell we have, which is the adipocyte. Again, these cells arise directly from the mesenchymal cells. Usually, they are surrounded by a basal lamina. So as I said, this cell arises from mesenchymal cell surrounded by a basal lamina. Usually inside it, we can find one fat droplet or we could find multiple fat droplets. If we have one single fat droplet, we call it as unilocular. And if we have more than one fat droplet, we call it as the multilocular. Usually the unilocular cells, they have a single large fat droplets. They have a receptors for insulin, growth hormone, norepinephrine, and glucocorticoids. Whenever the body needs more energy, these cells are going to break down or produce energy. As I said, the multilocular, they will contain small fat droplets. Usually these cells, regular H and E stain, they will appear with these empty spaces. Because during our slide preparation, we use alcohol and xylene. And alcohol and xylene going to dissolve these fat droplets. So the remnant will leave us only with this spaces. Usually what we can see here is the cytoplasm of the adipocyte and the nucleus here. This is the nucleus of the adipocyte. This is again all of these. The adipocyte and we can see here the faint area, the pink area here is the area of the cytoplasm and here we can see the nucleus of different adipocytes. As I said, this is the fat droplet. We have one single fat droplet and the nucleus is pushed to the periphery and this is the area of the plasma membrane and the blue area here, this is the area <coughs> of the cytoplasm. In this slide, we don't use the alcohol or xylene, so the fat droplet still exists. So this is the unilocular fat droplet. We stain the fat droplet directly so that there is no loss to the fat droplets. However, then the slide before we saw that there is the spaces that left after the tissue processing. 
Now I'm going to talk about the classification of the connective tissue. Usually we have two types of connective tissue. We have the connective tissue that only found in the embryo, and we call it the embryonic connective tissue. And usually we have two types, the mesenchymal connective tissue and the mucus. However, the one that found in the adult, we call it the connective tissue proper. And this type, we call it the loose connective, dense connective tissue, and also we have the special connective tissue, and we have the specialized connective tissue, which include the bone, the cartilage, and the blood. So the classification of the connective tissue again, we have only the connective tissue that found in the embryo, we call it as embryonic connective tissue, and here we have only two types, mesenchymal and mucus. For the connective tissue proper, we have two types, mainly we have the loose connective tissue and we have the dense connective tissue. Other connective tissue we have, which is the special connective tissue, we have reticular and adipose tissue, and also we have the specialized connective tissue, which include bone, cartilage, and blood. So we'll start with the embryonic connective tissue, the first one we have, which is the mucus connective tissue, not normally found in adult, only found in the fetus, and specifically it's found in the area of the umbilical cord, and usually the matrix is the predominant element. The most common structure here, as you remember from the connective tissue, we have cells, we have fiber, and we have the ground matrix. Here we have the cells and the matrix, however, we don't have the fibers. The fibers will be scanty. The amount of them is very limited compared with the matrix and the cells. Usually this one is gooey and wet, the fiber, as I said, very scanty, and the cells scattered. So you can see here there is the cells, there is the ground matrix. For a limited amount, we have some fibers. The other tissue we have, which is the mesenchymal connective tissue, the most common cells we have here, which is the mesenchymal cells. And usually this one consists of mesenchymal cells and amorphous ground substance. There is no fiber. As I said here, the cells, they have several processes, prominent nucleus and nucleolus. The, between the cells will have the matrix and there is no fibers. Now we're going to talk about the adult connective tissue, which is the connective tissue proper, usually we classify this fibrous tissue, the adult fibrous tissue, depend, first thing, in the fiber orientation. If the fiber runs at the same orientation, then we call it regular. If the fiber run in different orientation, then we call it irregular. Then this is the first classification. The other classification depends on the fiber packing. If we have single fibers like this, we call it loose. However, if we have bundles of fibers, like they arrange in bundles and groups, we call them dense. So they depend on the fiber orientation. If they run in the same orientation, we classify them as regular. If they are run in different orientation, then we call them irregular. Then we look for the fiber packing. If the fibers found as singles, we call them loose. However, if they found as bundles, as a group of fibers together, this we'll call it as dense. The other classification depends on the fiber type. What we have more? Collagen or elastic? Most of the time we'll have both collagen and elastic found in the same connective tissue. However, sometimes collagen is more predominant 
compared with the elastic. If we have more collagen, then we call it as collagenous connective tissue. If we have elastic more, then we call it elastic connective tissue. So as I said, connective tissue, which is proper, which is the connective tissue of the adult, usually fiber are the principal element, matrix moderate and all cell type present remember in the early in the lecture when we talk about the cells of the connective tissue most of the cells are present the classification depends on the density of the fiber and the arrangement we have loose versus dense and also we have regular versus irregular as i said we have types of fiber connective tissue we have the collagenous connective tissue and we have the elastic connective tissue in the collagenous connective tissue mainly collagen fiber present however still we have some elastic fiber present this is the most common type and form with high tensile strength due to the collagen fiber, it's very strong connective tissue. The other tissue we have, which is the elastic, principally there is elastic fiber as predominant, most common. However, still collagen fiber present, usually form bundles, uh, bands and sheets, and it's very important, provide elasticity, resilience, and shape retention. So provide elasticity, resilience, and finally the shape retention. We'll start with the first one, which is the loose connective tissue. Usually the loose connective tissue will be well vascularized. The amount of blood vessels is high in the loose connective tissue. We have abundant ground substance and small nerve fibers. Usually we have the common cells of the connective tissue, which is the fibroblast, macrophage, lymphocyte, mast cell, mesenchymal cells, all present. Usually the loose connective tissue, we find it in the adventitia of the blood vessels and the lamina propria of the intestine. Remember when you saw the symbol, sequimus epithelium? and the smooth muscle and we have the outer layer in the blood vessels the outer layer in the blood vessels we call it the adventitia for the lamina propria you remember when you saw the columnar epithelium the finger like projection the area that found in the core in the center of these villi usually this area here this is the area of the lamina propria most of the time, this area are loose connective tissue. So this is the area of the villi, the finger-like projection with the epithelium, the simple columnar with goblet cell. Here the area in the center, see this is the area in the center, highly vascularized, very cellular. This is the area of the lamina propria, which is loose connective tissue again this is the area of the epithelium and you can see this is the area of the basement membrane the area just below the epithelium this area called the lamina propria and this area here is a loose connective tissue which consists of fibers very cellular and highly vascularized there was a lot of blood vessels found in the area of the lamina propria so again, this is the area of the epithelium. This is the goblet cells. And inside here, this is the area inside here. This is the area of the lamina propria, which is just below the epithelium. And this area here is highly vascularized, very cellular. We can see we're not able to resolve the fiber, we could not see the fibers, but we know this area here, when we study it with electron microscopy, it consists of loose connective tissue. So this is the loose connective tissue, as you can see here, this is the cells. Most of these cells are fibroblasts. Here we have the fibers. 
there's a lot of spaces between them. This type of connective tissue, we call it the loose connective tissue. Now we'll talk about the dense connective tissue. For the dense connective tissue, we have two classifications. We have the irregular and we have the regular. Most of the time, the two types consist of fiber bundles, like fibers, closely back form bundles, almost like hair bundles. However, if the fiber runs at the same orientation, we call them regular. If they run in different orientation, we call them as the irregular connective tissue. So regular versus irregular only used with the dense connective tissue. So we have the dense irregular connective tissue, fiber bundles, no particular orientation, most abundant type of dense connective tissue found in the area of the dermis, also in the organ capsule. Whenever we have an organ that have capsule outside it, usually this capsule is dense irregular connective tissue. Our skin consists of creatinine stratified squamous epithelium, which is called as epidermis. The layer just below it, which is the area of the dermis, usually dense irregular connective tissue. We can see here, these are single fibers, but here the bundles. This is the area of collection of different fibers and we can see here we have different orientation different orientation means dense irregular connective tissue see this one here we have two types the dense regular versus the loose so we can see here so in this line we can see the first type which is the loose connective tissue. However, whenever we see this bundle, this bundle is from the dense connective tissue. And we can see here different orientation mean this is the dense regular connective tissue. Now talk to the second type, which is the dense regular. In this one, it again consists of collagen fiber. However, they run in the same orientation. You can see here, this is the fibroblast, and here's the bundle of the connective tissue. All of them, they have the same orientation. So this type, we call it as a dense regular connective tissue. Usually this type of connective tissue only found in two areas tendon and ligament. Remember this, this is very important. Dense regular connective tissue only found in tendons and ligaments. So you can see here we have the bundles, they run the same orientation, this is the dense regular connective. However, we have bundles in different orientation, then this type is the irregular connective tissue. The most common type we can see here, these cells are the fibroblast because these cells are responsible for the production of the fiber and also the matrix. As I said, always the dense regular connective tissue we found it in tendons and ligament. And we can see here these fibers runs at the same orientation so found the dense regular in the tendons and ligament again we can see here this is the fiber run at the same orientation so all of this is the dense regular connective tissue and the cells that we can see here these cells are the fibroblast Again, same orientation with bundles. This is the dense regular connective tissue. Very important. Only we can see them in ligament and tendon. 
see again here this is the area of the tendon and this is the ligament and we can see all the bundles run at the same orientation so we have tendon and ligament the type of connective tissue found there uh, is dense regular connective tissue we could see this dense regular, uh, dense regular connective tissue may contain collagen fiber and may also contain elastic fibers see here all of these fibers run in the same orientation we call it dense regular elastic connective tissue the one that the ones that we saw before most of them is the dense regular collagenous connective tissue Now I'm going to talk about the special connective tissue. In this type of the special connective tissue, they have the traditional component, which is the cells, the fiber, the matrix. However, one of the types, like our component, which is the cell or the fiber matrix, will be predominant. The most like amount of the tissue found from these components could be the cells, could be the fiber, could be the matrix. So we have the reticular fiber, we have the adipose connective tissue, and in the embryo, we have the mucus connective tissue. So we'll start with the reticular connective tissue. They have the fibrous component. Most common will be the reticular fiber, which is type 3 collagen. If you remember when we talk about the fibers, we, we said we have collagen fibers, type 1. We have type 3 collagen, which is reticular fiber. And also we have the elastic fiber. Here in this type, the most prominent, predominant fibers will be the reticular fibers. However, these reticular fibers, they are very small. If you remember, they are only 45 nanometer. To be able to see this fiber, we have to use a special stain, which is silver impregnation. And this silver impregnation will give them the color black, as we can see here. So as we can see here, in this slide here, most of the fibers that we have here will be the reticular fiber. And usually these fibers form a 3D web work, will be like this in a 3d orientation so that we call it 3d web works more cellular than the most connective there will be a lot of cells found in this connective tissue relatively little matrix the amount of matrix will be very limited the location will be found in the stroma of the lymphatic organ whenever we have lymph nodes spleen all of the reticular or the fiber that found in this organ and support this organ will be reticular fiber. The second thing, they encoding blood vessels. If you remember, blood vessels have three layers, and the outer layer is connected with other tissues by reticular fibers. Finally, they found in the homopoietic areas. In the bone marrow, we have the reticular fibers. We can see here, this is the area from the lymph node, and you can see these fibers here, all of these fibers are reticular fibers. The second one we have, which is the mucus connective tissue, as I said, is not normally found in adult, only found in the umbilical cord. From outside, we have the skin, regular skin. However, the matrix material will be predominant elements so the matrix is the most common and predominant in this type of mucus we have fiber as i said is very scanty very limited and the cells are scattered distributed in this connective tissue so we can see here this is the cells and what we can see here only we can see the matrix very limited amount of fibers.
So this is the umbilical cord from outside. We have the epidermis, the skin. Inside we have the arteries and veins. And this is the area where we have the mucous connective tissue. We have the cells and the matrix. Very limited amount of fibers. So this is for the higher magnification. You can see all here just the cells and matrix. As I said, very limited amount of fibers. Finally, I'm going to talk about the adipose connective tissue. This is a connective tissue. They have cells, fibers, and matrix. However, the most predominant feature of this one, a predominant element of this adipose connective tissue, will be the adipose cells, which, is, uh, which are the adipocyte. And usually these tissue which is the adipose cells, are scattered in other connective tissue, could be singly, like this single cells, or in clumps in any loose connective tissue. So we could find these cells infiltrated between regular cells of the connective tissue, or they found uh, isolated clumps. Usually, the function of the adipose tissue are broadly protective and supportive all the organs in our body for example our kidneys they are covered by adipose connective tissue and this adipose connective tissue provide protection and support also the adipose connective tissue is the area where we store the excess amount of the sugars usually they are stored as adipose tissue we have two forms of the adipose connective tissue. We have the white adipose and we have the brown adipose connective tissue. In the white adipose connective tissue, the most common cell is found is the adipocyte with unilocular fat droplets. So all of these spaces, this is the area where we have the fat, as I said, with the processing of the tissue for histopathology usually we lose the fat droplets all we can see here is the remnant of the area where we have the fat droplets as we can see here the nucleus is pushed to the periphery and there is scanty amount of the cytoplasm so this is the area of cytoplasm again this is the area of the cytoplasm all of this okay the nucleus is pushed into periphery because here we have one single fat droplets and usually, as I said, cells occur singly or in depots, in fibrous connective tissue. We have single fat droplets. Usually they have energy storage and shock protection function. This is the white fat cells. As I said, they have one single fat droplet. They push the nucleus to the periphery. We have scanty amount of the cytoplasm not membrane bound there's no membrane bound the fat droplets that make it easier for processing and breakdown and normally granules is found in the white fat cells nucleus is displaced to the periphery widely wide distribution like we can find it almost in all organs and tissue of our body these cells long-lived and non-dividing they live for a very long time and they could not divide and usually they function as energy reserve and as a cushioning as protection the 
other type of the adipose connective tissue is the brown fat and usually their appearance almost like glandular appearance in this type we have the nucleus found in the nucleus and we can see here there are several fat droplets small fat droplets okay it's not one single fat droplets there's multiple fat droplets and usually the nucleus is found in the center because not as we saw before for the unilocular there's one fat droplet and this fat droplet push the nucleus in the periphery here we have small fat droplets and distributed uniformly in the cells so the nucleus is found in the center they have limited distribution only found in younger mammals so in adult we have limited amount of the brown adipose connective tissue these cells have a high mitochondria they have one only function which is heat generation these cells are responsible for the heat generation as i said these cells only function or they look the brown fat is responsible for heat generation and this is very important in younger animals than the adults because we need very fast breakdown for the fat droplets for production of the energy so in this type here we can see the nucleus is in the center and around it all of these structure are the fat droplets so here lipid bodies are multiple the brown color is coming from the mitochondria and blood vessels that found around these fat droplets and that's give it the color brown usually these cells or this type of tissue the brown fat is found a rodent and also in the hibernating animal the animals that sleep during the winter time such as the white bears and these animals 